Do you think we would be here today without the GOP referendum? I think we would be standing here celebrating uh, the ability of folks to get married, but it might have been in maybe a couple more years. The fact that we had this conversation over the last two years, this campaign, uh, people were able to talk to each other and really come together around the values that united them and really get past some of the hyperbole and some of the misinformation and some of the fear and some of the distraction and, and talk about what we all share. People could really see their own story in this whole conversation, the thing that they cherish the most in their lives, they didn't want to deny to other people. And I think we had that opportunity over the last couple of years, and that just carried into the legislative session and it resulted in that amazing vote yesterday. Do you think we would be here today on the marriage equality bill if it wasn't for the GOP referendum? No, we absolutely wouldn't be here. I've never seen a situation like this where there was such overreach and such a, mis a misread on uh, Minnesotans in which they put those constitutional amendments on. I think we were still a few years away um, in terms of being able to get to this day. I also think that it really brought Minnesotans out and recognized that this was a pure overreach and that, uh, and that this is not the type of legislature that they wanted representing them, and therefore that's why they uh, uh, made the change and put... Uh, uh, Democrats in power in the Senate and in the House. Do you think we would be here today, a year too early, without the GOP referendum? Oh, no way. Uh, we would have never been here had it not been the fact that we had this amendment in 2012. Uh, across the state, the LGBT rights organizations often had their own issues they worked on, their own turf that they covered, and what that amendment did was it put us all at the same table and said, okay, what are our strengths and what do we need to do to defeat this? It it grew with the largest network of contacts that the LGBT community has had, not just of ourselves, but of our allies. It put us into fundraising sources. It got us speaking with members of religious communities in ways that we never have. How big is your email list now? I believe by the end, Minnesotans United had a 60,000 person contact list. And that was in addition to everything that Outfront, Pro Project 515, the DFL party, everything that we had already had, we were able to supplement that and ha have the largest collection of, of how we get in touch with gay people across the state.